Matthew 21, verses 1 8. Watch here. And when they drew near to Jerusalem, came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives. Remember, Mount of Olives, right? Mount of Olives. Please remember this. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says, says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And he will send them immediately. Now, this took place, watch, to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble <clears throat> and mounted on an ass, on a colt, the full of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. So now it says, this fulfills Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Now, here's where you're going to really have to pay attention. Or you're going to get lost. Zechariah 9, verses 9 to 11. Rejoice. This is what he fulfilled. O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding an ass. On a colt, the full of an ass. And if you're coming for the first time, if this is your first time, you're going to get blown to smithereens. Because I'm going to show you who this king is. Who is this king that physically rides a physical animal? Notice, he's physically riding a physical animal. Okay? It's nothing metaphorical here. But who is he? I'll show it to you in a minute. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations, because he's going to rule the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. <clears throat> As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your captives free from the waterless pit. That means from hell. I will make a covenant with you, and on the basis of the blood of my covenant, I will ransom you from the waterless pit. Okay, now watch. First of all, let's see who made that covenant. And by the way, it, this coincides with Easter that's coming. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Matthew 26, 26, 28. But wait, what did Zechariah 9, 11 say? Because of the blood of my covenant to you, I will set your captives free from the waterless pit. The blood shed to ratify my covenant will be the basis for you being saved from the pit of hell. Jesus fulfilled that. You caught it? Well, now watch this part. Who's coming physically on an animal to enter Jerusalem? We know it's physical, not metaphorical, because he's riding a physical animal, which means this king is a physical being. He has a body. All right. Now, guys, you want to get ready to be blown away? I'm going to go to Zechariah 14.9 for now, and I'm going to read the context. Go watch here. Zechariah 14, verse 9. And the Lord will become king over all the earth. On that day, the Lord will be one, and his name will be will be one. Okay, now, Zechariah 14, 9 says, the one who will be king over the world is Yahweh. And he will be the only sovereign authority ruling over the world. The Lord will be king. He is the one and only. And his authority will be the only authority established in all the world. So the king is the Lord. And if, in case you miss it, where will he be ruling from? Then everyone that survives all of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the King Yahweh of hosts. So notice the Lord of hosts will be ruling in Jerusalem, which is why representatives of nations have to go to Jerusalem to see him there to honor him and to keep the Feast of Booths. And if any of the families do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, God will then punish them by not bringing rain on their crops. So notice, Yahweh is the king 
who will be in Jerusalem, and people have to go there and honor him and see him there in Jerusalem, or they'll be punished. And he is the king who alone will rule over the world. Where? Jerusalem. Uh-oh. But Zechariah 9.9 9 says, this king who comes to Jerusalem will physically ride a donkey. What? Same prophet that wrote Zechariah 9 saying the king of Jerusalem will enter Jerusalem physically riding a physical animal says, well, that king is Yahweh. The nations will have to honor him by going up to Jerusalem to see him there because he's the king whom they must worship there. That Zechariah just envisioned the God of Israel with a physical body embodied having a physical body who will physically ride a donkey into Jerusalem and will physically live in Jerusalem. Now you want more proof? This Yahweh comes as a man with a physical body? Let's start the beginning. Then the Lord, Yahuwah, will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. Now watch, he has feet. On that day, his feet will touch what? The Mount of Olives. Now, to prove these feet are physical, note what happens to the Mount of Olives when his feet land, which lies before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two. You cannot allegorize this because the mountain will be literally physically split. Why? Because of Yahweh's physical feet touching the mountain. Watch, Robert Jenkins is going to go out with a bang. So did you catch that Zechariah says Yahweh has a physical body whose physical feet will physically split the Mount of Olives and will physically ride a physical animal into Jerusalem. So Zechariah sees his God in the flesh with a physical body. Now watch how this points to Christ. Wait, hold on. From east to west will be split, so that half of the mountain shall withdraw northward, and the other half southward. And the valley of the high mountain shall be stopped up, for the valley of the mountain shall touch the side of it. And you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Now in case you still don't get, he's talking about Yahweh. Then the Lord your God will come. Not a creature, not an angelic creature or a human prophet. The Lord your God will come and all the holy ones with him. And that's when the Lord will live in Jerusalem physically with those same physical feet that physically touch him on about split it after physically entering there on a donkey to rule as the king. Zechariah 14, verse 1 and 5, 9, 16, 17. Now you want to see how this points to Jesus? Watch. Let's go back and see. Who rode the donkey? Jesus. And he came from where? The Mount of Olives. And he did what? Fulfill Zechariah 9, 9. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble, mounted on an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. You understand what Jesus was doing? When he physically rode the donkey, to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, he was signaling, I am that Yahweh God that Zechariah said would come in the flesh to Jerusalem. 